Hello everybody and welcome to the barbecue shop here at Hayes Garden World and Merry Christmas. Today we are joined by top barbecue chef Mr Richard Holden. Hello. And in this video we're going to show you how to do a turkey on a Weber Master Touch charcoal barbecue. Okay then Richard, so talk us through prepping our turkey. We're going to keep it really simple and really classic. Uh, we're going to go for some traditional English flavours with the turkey. We've got a five kilo bronze turkey here uh, that's been out of the fridge a good 45 minutes to let it come up to room temperature to take the chill off. Uh, in the cavity of there we're going to pop some salt and pepper and then we're going to intersperse some, um, some apple, some onion, some lemon and we've got some fresh herbs, we've got some fresh thyme and we've got some fresh rosemary. That's going to go inside the cavity. Then across the top we're going to do some salt and pepper. Not too much salt though because we're going to layer some streaky bacon across the top which is going to help keep the breast nice and juicy and moist, add some flavour and of course that bacon is partly cured with salt. So we're going to get some saltiness from that bacon as well. Um, that's going to be our turkey prepped and then underneath the turkey to make the starters of our gravy we've got a tray here with some celery, carrot, apple, a little bit of onion and the giblets less the liver. Um, the liver just toss that to one side because that's that will make the gravy bitter so you just put the neck the gizzard and the heart into the gravy and a little bit of water in there just to help things to cook and start to um, start cooking off for going nice and soft for our gravy okay so if we're ready to make a start yeah what we can do is if you want to grab the salt and pepper I'll just hold the, uh, the bird upright it's important to season the outside but it's also important to season the inside as well so if I just tilt that around we can get some seasoning inside that cavity take that off there we go, last bit of packaging. So salt goes into the cavity and then we'll do the same with the pepper. And, um, you know, we're going in with some, that's perfect. So we're gonna go in with some onion and some lemon. For me, these add a really nice uh, level of moisture and some flavor to the, to the turkey. Um, you wanna go in with some nice aromatic elements um, if you think about a basic gravy, one of the things that is a basic element in there is, is your onion, so get some good, uh, good savoury notes from there. So put some more lemon, some more onion, pack that in, and then finish off with a little bit of apple. And this, you know, some people may be saying, well, why aren't you adding the sausage meat stuffing in here? Personally, it's up to you. But um, for me, I, I, I cook that separately. Yeah, I um, do too. If you want to make, if you do, if you are somebody that puts the stuffing in the turkey, then we're not saying that that's wrong. What we would say though is make sure that the turkey and the stuffing are at room temperature before you put the, the sausage meat stuffing in the cavity. And then not only would you use a temperature probe to make sure the outside of the bird is cooked, but you would also make sure that you temperature probe that um, stuffing to make sure that that's also at 75 degrees C core temperature as well. So we've got the, um, the ingredients inside the cavity. Just pull that little bit of uh, skin down over there. And again, if you can season on yeah, the um, salt on the bird for us. So a little bit of mold and sea salt. Just pat that on and a little bit on the legs as well if I could as well, Ian. Just get that nicely seasoned up, perfect. And then we'll do the same with the pepper. And if you're wondering what these little black flecks are showing underneath the skin, these are um, some of the pens that are left over from this being a bronze turkey. It's just a different breed of bird, um, just a different variety, should I say, of turkey. So that's all perfectly good. And then the bacon. It's the bacon. So just layer this on. This is streaky bacon, good fat content. It's nice and crispy. We were just discussing this before we started the shoot. We both are... Um, bacon butty on Christmas morning. Yeah, we're both from Bacon Sandwich on Christmas Day morning households. Um, this is going to come off part way through the cook. Um, and what will happen is that the, uh, the crown, the bird itself, will not crisp up underneath. And it won't go golden when the bacon's on. So part way through the cook, probably when the turkey's around about that 50 five degree C mark, um, we'll take the foil, which I'm gonna just come to in a moment, but we'll take the foil off and we'll take the bacon off. The bacon will have gone nice and crispy because it will have rendered. And, um, and then we can have the best bacon sandwiches of the year, really. So let's just go, we've got a few more slices in there. Let's just... Can you over bacon something? Is it possible so. ever? I don't think so. No, I really don't think so. I think it's all good. So. The one thing that we do need to be careful of, though, with the bacon is that as this heats up, the fat's going to start to render, yep. and this can basically turn into a bacon avalanche. So when you're only using foil purely 
to cinch in around that bacon, holding it all in place. This isn't to say that this isn't us saying that you need to wrap things in foil in order to roast things on a barbecue, because obviously if you've watched the other videos in the series, you know that that's not the case. This is just to hold everything in place so that that bacon stays where, it, where we want it to be and the juices will render and the flavors will render into the breast. So say somebody doesn't bake in their turkey, would you put the foil on or just put it straight yes, in? Yes, I would, you I would. would. And there's two ways of doing it actually. One is you could leave it completely open and just season the top and pop it on. And then at the point when the turkey looks beautifully golden brown and you don't want it to carry on coloring anymore, then you can put foil on right, okay. and let it cook up to 75 degrees. The other way is to foil it from the very beginning, like we're doing here. And then, like I say, around about the 55 degree mark, take that foil off and then let the, let the actual bird brown up um, in the remaining cooking time. And then once it's 75, you know, and if you if you run into an issue where it's say 60, high 60s and it's and it's the right color, but it still needs to carry on cooking a bit more, just refoil it and it'll yeah. absolutely be fine. But we're still going to get air underneath this. We're still going to get a nice air, hot air around there. It'll still roast through, and then as I say, we'll take that foil off. So, so are we done prepping. We're ready for the barbecue. All prepped up, ready to go to the barbecue. So Richard, we've done all our prep work. Ready to go to the barbecue. So we've got the barbecue set up. It's around about 180, 185. Anywhere between 175 and 200 is fine. It's just going to take a little bit longer if it's a little bit cooler. Um, obviously, on Christmas Day or in colder weather, you might need a bit more fuel. You might need a few extra briquettes to get yeah. the same temperature. But what we've got is, just like any other roast, we've got um, the fuel in either side. Just hang that on the side. So we've got fuel on the left, fuel on the right. If you can pass me the uh, tray with the makings of the gravy, that's going to go down below. Cooking grate goes back on. And then, what you'll notice there is that we've got a couple of um, pieces of tin foil. Because this barbecue can take, I've done an 18 pound turkey on this barbecue and it's absolutely fine space wise. Um, but just to protect the sides of the bird, the, the wings and the drumsticks, I just take these little bits of foil that I've just folded over, made a few layers thick. They're gonna go on about so. And then we take the turkey, Yep. we put that on, and we just sit that on. We've still got good ventilation underneath, and um, we're going to build up the heat around there. And the only other thing that we need to do, we're going to use the eye grill uh, to make sure that we are cooking our turkey without needing to lift the lid, because as we know, if you're looking, you ain't cooking. So there you go. this is the eye grill too. And what we're going to do, we're going to put the red one in the right breast and the yellow one in the left breast and just pop the tips of those probes so that they're in the deepest part of the, of the bird. Then we pop the lid down and that's already on. So that is just going to sit down on our little shelf down there. And then really the only other thing to do is to come to our phone or our iPad or other tablets and Android smart devices. devices are available. Um, and then we do a complete setup. So I've labeled this as, the, as the, the, the Christmas turkey. And then we've got two probes in here. So if I select the left one, we can set up the cook. And if I go to poultry and select chicken, then I can scroll up and I find where it says the other poultry birds. I select the turkey and we start the cook. And that has a built-in temperature selection of 74 degrees, which is only one degree away from our 75 stay alive. So this setting will give us a five degree warning so at 69 degrees, my phone will get a text message to say, go outside, check your turkey, because um, it's almost cooked. And at that point, you can either leave it on a few more degrees, or you can take it off and rest it somewhere warm, uh, nice and insulated with some tin foil and some blankets, and it will rest up to that 75. So is it cooked? Yes, it is. We know because we're using the Digital Temperature Pro. Um, the only other thing that I would say, you know, we talk about this all the time when yep. we do our demonstrations, cooking the turkey on the barbecue, if you're short of oven space on Christmas day, and Quite often people say that turkey is one of the driest meats that yeah. they ever have in a year. And it's really, there's a few things there. So first of all, if you've got a barbecue and you're not using it to cook anything at Christmas, then you're, you're making life harder for yourself. So use the barbecue to cook your turkey. Um, the barbecue will be outside. Yep. We generally have a nice damp atmosphere around December time. Yeah. So it will be drawing in that damp air and keeping the turkey nice and juicy and succulent. Um, and the um, the, other, the only other thing that I would say is with the charcoal barbecue, um, if you're on a gas, you have no concern of this one, but on a charcoal barbecue, every hour, if you come fuel. back and just add maybe two or three briquettes to either side, so three on this side, 
three on this side, just use those hinge cooking grates to make it easy for yourself. And because this is a 100% natural product, yeah. we don't need to make sure that they're lit before they go onto the barbecue. We can add unlit coals to the barbecues that are going along. Um, and just adding three to either side every hour should maintain that temperature. It's just like tending a fire in a hearth. Every now and then, just go back and add a bit more fuel and just let it build back up. Don't let it get too low. Don't let it get too high either. Just maintain it. And make sure that you can see the thermometer from the kitchen door or the kitchen window. Just so, so you don't have to go outside. You've got your turkey on. It's outside. You've got everything prepped up. So. You're inside wearing your Christmas jumper. I yep. noticed you brought yours today, but <laughs> you're inside wearing your Christmas jumper, um, having some good times with the family, playing with the kids, new toys, everything else. Maybe having a glass of Prosecco or whatever on Christmas Day, bacon butty as we mentioned, and that's taking care of itself. Yep. So we're going to let that cook off. Yeah, I think this five kilo turkey, I'm expecting that to take about three hours. But using the eye grill technology, we can make sure that we monitor that all the way through. But we give it enough time, just as we would if we were cooking it in the oven, we give it enough time to make sure that it's cooked in plenty of time and it will rest very happily at the end for a good hour, hour and a half yep. while staying completely warm. Yeah, so we'll let that get on with its thing and we'll come back in a few hours time and see how we're getting on. iGrill says we're at 64, so it's time to take the bacon and the foil off the breasts. So if we just take those out of there for two seconds, hang those down there. And then if you bring that plate across, what we can hopefully do, look at that. that. There we go, so we've got our bacon there for a nice little breakfast morn uh, Christmas morning bacon sarnie. I'm just going to nick a bit, just check it's okay. And then a little bit of quality control, and then those just go back in. Now some people may think, well, you know, we've always been told to check the legs for temperatures on poultry. Absolutely fine. What we'll do is we'll check all four points before we take that bird off. But that is ready to carry on cooking. Lid back down again, we'll monitor the fuel as we've been talking about already, and we'll just keep that going until it's around about 70, 71, and then we'll take it off and let it rest. So nothing else to do with this for now. Bacon boy. Bacon sandwich. So we're checking on our turkey in the mass touch. Oh, look at that. That is what you want your Christmas turkey to look like. So the iGrill app told us that it was at the 71, 72 mark. So we got the alert, came over to the barbecue, and this is what we've been greeted with. So if we just gather this up, we've got a plate there ready to go. And those little bits of foil have really just been to protect the wings and the um, un and the thighs that are underneath there as well. So that's our Christmas turkey. We've got our uh, tray in the bottom of there to do the gravy with it later on. But really, if you want to just take a tin, uh, a sheet of tin foil and just cozy that in around the turkey. This is the time that you have now to do roast potatoes, roast vegetables, sausage meat, whatever whatever else you have to cook. Uh, this will sit perfectly, almost as long as you've cooked it for, if that's what you want to do. Um, on a warm serving plate, onto a wooden board, a couple of sheets of tin foil over the top, that is really nice and warm, but I can still feel heat there. So, a couple of, couple of three nice clean thick tea towels, they go over. And you, can, you will be able to let that rest for an hour and a half? You would, easily. Um, take that into the kitchen, where it's at room temperature, leave that somewhere, just off to one side so that it can just rest up, and like I say, you've got loads of time to do other bits and bobs that you need to do to put everything on the table for Christmas dinner. And that will still be nice and warm when you come to carve it later on, which we'll do in a moment. So here we are, we've brought it all together. Our turkey's ready. Yep. So we've got our pigs in blankets. We've got our stuffing. We've got, got our, our festive caramelized fruit, the pears and the apple slices. We've got our vegetables. Yep. We've got our roast potatoes. Rosemary and garlic potatoes that I cannot wait to try because they just look fantastic. We've got our gravy. We've got our walnut and so rosemary So the only gravy. thing left for you to do is to carve the bird. The turkey itself, so let's just have a look here. Juice is just running off the bottom of the blade as I'm carving this. And absolutely that. That beautiful. Beautiful, let's just move that to one side. I don't want to knock that. So there we go. Cooking your turkey on the barbecue Saves you all the hassle. Saves you all the hassle. Um, it's something a little bit different as well. If you haven't tried it before, uh, please don't try it for the first time on Christmas Day, because there is a lot of things going on on Christmas Day as it is. 
roast something before Christmas Day, get comfortable with the indirect heat setup, how, understand how your barbecue works, particularly if you haven't managed the fuel on a long burn on a charcoal barbecue. Um, but you know, the bottleneck, all these dishes pretty much cooked on an indirect heat setup, so it's the oven, so you've, you've got an extra oven outside. Um, but when you do that, you just, need to, you just need to cycle things through in the way that makes the most sense. So as we mentioned in the roast potato video, you can par cook them. So you can do the boil, you can put them into the tray with the rosemary, the garlic and the hot oil, give them 20 minutes, start to get them coloured, then take them off onto some paper towel, let them cool down, let them drain, and then on the day of Christmas, you can just put them, put a tray of oil back onto the barbecue on the direct heat, get it nice and hot, potatoes back in, move to the indirect and finish off the cook. We've rested this for a good hour, yep. hour and a half, uh, under some tin foil, under the blankets as you saw, and it's just absolutely held its temperature. We've been, we've actually, even outside today, it's held its temperature, it's still above 70 degrees, nothing taking any harm with that whatsoever, and as I sliced it, you could see some of the steam coming off here, so it is warm, we're not just saying this. A um, little bit of wood smoke on the, on the sausage meatballs just to give them some colour and a little bit of extra flavour, just for something a little bit different. But it really is something that we encourage people to give a go. Yep. Something a bit different, practice before you get to Christmas Day, and then it's not, you know, you're not, you're not kind of taking up all your time and concentrating on the barbecue when you actually want to be enjoying your friends and family. Um, but, you know, have a go. Take some, uh, take some photographs, post them to the um, Hayes Garden World Barbecue Shop Instagram account or Facebook account. Yep. Tag us in, let us know what you're doing. Generally, when people do it, they're really excited, so they're happy and there's a face in with that food picture. Um, if you want to know anything about any of the equipment we use in any of these videos, visit the barbecue shop here at Hayes Garden World. Something different about our barbecue shop compared to a lot of other garden centres barbecue shop, ours is all year round, it's not just for summer. Christmas presents, people that are hard to buy for, don't know if you know yeah. anybody like that, but barbecues tend to be a good little thing to just, here you go, something different the for The staff in store know what they're talking about, they've Absolutely. seen us done this, some of them have done it themselves, I've done it a few times, you've done it a few you've times. You've been doing it a few years, yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll just leave it at that one So, for that. I think there's one last thing to do. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, I always get excited when we talk, we haven't got the Christmas pudding here, but check out the Christmas pudding recipe yeah. as well. So, cheers, everybody. Cheers, everybody. Merry Christmas. Merry Have Christmas. a great time, and we'll see you in the new year. Cheers. Cheers. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.